Why, laddie, why? Why? Why, en France? Why? Ça toujours? Why? Ça bien va moins? Why? Why, laddie, why? Why? Your time, your palette. Why? Your my palette. Why? My palette, your. Why? Why, your job, but your mama. Why? Why, your job, but your papa. Why? Why, your job, but your mama. This is from my book, History and Language in St. Lucia, 1654 to 1915. These are extracts from the dedication page and the acknowledgements page. The dedication. This is dedicated to the St. Lucian people. Our lives have been affected by a history of slavery, colonialism, betrayals by some of our leaders, as well as a culture of dissonance and dislocation among ourselves. However, within all this, we have snatched moments of creativity, identity, freedom, unity, scholarship, resourcefulness, and hope. It is on this, th these elements that the next generation may build. St. Lucian history has usually been taught as part of a larger story. For example, Caribbean history in the CXC curriculum, or as one of the key stage two geography options in the British National Curriculum. This book is part of the emerging focus from St. Lucian eyes. The book is dedicated to the memory of my ancestors, Isaacs, paternal, and Dalphinis, maternal. Chibi wed, whole life hard. From the acknowledgements, about 30 Eight years ago, at the slave at the Gore slave fort, in the room facing the slit in the wall where the captives would go through to the smaller boats, leading to the larger boats and the last memory of home, I felt a sudden electric current between myself and the soil. The room was dark. The soil below was composed of feces, bones, spirits of crushed ancestors. My feelings were of discomforting damp, fear, sweat, pain and despair beyond the blues. I anticipated being prepared for hell by black traitors for white devils. Black betrayal was being grafted to white sin. I also felt exhilaration and triumph. We had survived their evil and lived. Our ancestors had outlived their evil experience. They had made all these sacrifices so that we lived. They had renounced the devil and lived. They had never been enslaved because they had never accepted it. We were always free and it is the devils who have been, both then and now, enslaved. To appease the spirits, I asked my guide, a young man in his early twenties and a native of Gori, to run quickly to purchase a bottle of strong drink. I then made him pray in Wolof while he poured the libation into the soil, that we would never again in history repeat such stupidity. Leaving the room and leaving Gore, as a young man in my late twenties, I knew that part of my mission was to help return our language and our history to ourselves, despite the constraints that I then faced. These included lack of money and relating to people who believed our history and our languages were worth less than spit. I knew that somehow I had to complete my research to attain peace, Jamarek, peace only in Wolof. 
The years have passed. I am now, by the grace of the Almighty, in my 68th year, and there is still everything to do. Black self-hatred and self-destruction continues. Whites, and now some Asians, profiting from this mental state continues. And this is negatively reinvested in our future generations. In these modern times, I at times again feel the damp of now being engulfed in filth from people and things which are perpetually unclean. Yoniso dis, they have an uncleanable filth in Patwa Quayol. However, I remind myself how much worse it all was when I had begun these studies, and I pray that I have used this electric current through the ancestors to help cleanse the damp, to, to enlighten within the darkness, to pass on in my small way the lightning of freedom. Zikle liberty, patwa creole. The mistakes are mine. No, my God, you are. Why, I'm born. It's a bad way.